Hello and welcome back to the 8-Bit Guy. So in a previous episode, I said that I wanted to make reviews of these modern games for vintage systems to be a regular part of my show. So this is the second episode where I'm going to be doing that. And I think it's really important uh, to continue to produce new content for these machines because that's the way to keep the platforms alive. Um, now, I've never played these games before, so I have no idea what's going to be in store for us. Uh, all of these games are produced by a company called Mega Cat Studios. Um, these two games here are for the original Nintendo Entertainment System, and uh, one's called Almost Hero, and the other one's called Log Jammers. And then this one here is called Coffee Crisis, and it is for the Sega Genesis. So um, I'm going to try these things out, and um, for better or worse, <laughs> and uh, let's see what they are, and let's see if they're any good. Let's check out the packaging first. One thing I can say about these boxes is that they look really nice. I mean, they're really nice and glossy, but they're really, really thin. If you sit anything on these, they will crush. If they had just put some inner cardboard structure, that would have been nice. So let's take a look at the actual cartridge. Now, this looks very nice. It feels nice and heavy, and the label looks great. And it does come with a nice glossy printed manual. Well, let's put it in my NES and turn it on. I have to use the real hardware since I don't have a ROM image for an emulator. I like the intro. It looks very nice. So the first thing you do in this game is select who you want to play. I have no idea who to pick, so I'll just pick Hotfoot Francis. Next, I need to pick an opponent. I'll pick this guy. Next, you pick where you want to play. I'll just go with the default. Well, guys, this is it. This is essentially the main part of the game. I'm the player on the bottom of the screen, and if you think about it, this is really a lot like a fancy game of Pong. Uh, each player is just trying to throw the axe into one of those nets behind the other player, and you can throw the axe to the side or straight ahead. I've had better luck throwing it to the side. Uh, when the axe comes your way, you try to catch it. In real life, I'm not so sure I'd want to uh, catch a flying axe. Each player apparently has a special skill or a signature move, which is detailed in the manual. So, for example, Hotfoot Francis can throw two hatchets at the same time. But in order to use the skill, you have to catch a little power-up star that comes onto the playfield every now and then. And um, there are some other generic power-ups that are uh, detailed here in the manual. Uh, other places you can play are Mount Vesuvius and the International Space Station. But from what I can tell, there's no change in the gameplay other than the scenery. So what's my final opinion? Um, overall, I feel it's well made, but to be honest, this isn't the sort of game that's going to keep anyone's attention for more than 5 or 10 minutes these days. I do like the music, though. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, this one is called Almost Hero. Uh, based on these screenshots, I think it may prove to be somewhat more interesting than Logjammer. Uh, it does come in the same flimsy box. And here's the actual cartridge. It's black. Uh, very nice. It reminds me of the Tengen games. It does have a very nice label, just like the last one. Of course, the real test is to put the game in the console and see if it's any fun. When you start the game, it does give you a bit of a backstory, but to be honest, you can probably ignore most of this and it won't affect the gameplay. The manual goes into a bit more detail. So apparently you can go to the sewer, the dojo, or the city. I think I'll start with the dojo. See that shell on the floor? Yeah, that actually does pretty much what you would expect it to do. Uh, you can pick this thing up and throw it at your enemies. Each level has some sort of retro themed object that you can pick up. Um, otherwise, you have to fight these guys hand to hand. Uh, it reminds me a lot of Double Dragon. And uh, when you defeat one, he usually makes some kind of joke and then he'll drop some sort of energy boost as he dies, which uh, you'll want to pick that up if you can. There are essentially only three fight moves, and while I haven't quite figured out if one really works better than another at any given time, uh, the best strategy I've come up with is just to do my best to avoid being in a fight with more than one guy at a time, uh, which means moving around a lot. When you die, you'll find yourself back here again. Um, this time, I'll try the city. It looks like there's a boombox I can pick up and throw at the bad guys. Other than different scenery, there's not a lot different about fighting here. Um, eventually, you'll clear all the bad guys, and an arrow will light up telling you to move on to the next screen, where more bad guys await. And uh, this is apparently a Furby that you can throw. <laughs> okay, uh, let's try the sewer. Um, 
Great, the bad guys can fall off and die too. I like it already. So uh, the gameplay is a little different in the sewer since you can apparently fall off the edge and die. The manual shows the four different weapons you can pick up. Uh, we've seen three of these so far. Apparently there's a laser disc as well. You can also buy different things from Chao Kahn's shop, which uh, will help your hero through these battles. Overall, I'd say this is a decent game, even if it is of a genre that uh, I never really cared much for. Um, if this were available back in the 1980s, I think it would have been a decent selling game. And on to our third and last game, also from Mega Cat Studios. Uh, this is Coffee Crisis for the Sega Genesis. Now, this is a very Genesis-like case, and it even has a special area to hold the cartridge. So let's take a look at it. I like the translucent red case. Again, very nice label. Okay, very nice. Uh, let's have a look at the user's manual. Um, it fits inside the left side and is held in by these little tabs. Let's pull it out and have a look. Nicely made. Uh, not much left to do now, but uh, insert the game into the old Genesis and fire it up. Alright, so uh, here it is. Okay, so to make a long story short, um, aliens have been downloading music from our internet and they want to capture all of our greatest musicians. They're under the impression that the place to find these musicians is at Black Forge Coffee House. And so that's where they're uh, starting their invasion. So this is actually just another fighting game, uh, only you're fighting aliens with bags of coffee beans and steam pitchers. When you manage to defeat an alien, uh, they are beamed up to their ship. Um, if you time it just right, you can do these power shots by holding down the B button. There seems to be a lot of storytelling in between the scenes. Uh, for example, here the coffeehouse employees are discussing how they're going to use the six demon blend to attack the aliens. Um, then there's this guy with the tinfoil hat who's always talking to you. And I've read through the manual twice and I'm still a bit fuzzy as to who this guy is. Anyway, um, some of the aliens actually look like regular people, like this elderly man. I haven't quite figured out why. Um, then there's this other guy and a cowgirl I've seen a few times. Also, you can pick up the smaller aliens and throw them. As is typical of a game like this, uh, towards the end of the level you'll have a bunch of aliens to fight at once, and if you manage to win then you'll get to fight the level boss, which you'll see shortly. Also trash cans and other objects occasionally contain health points. And here's the level boss in all of his tentacle glory. He's actually not that hard to defeat, at least on this level, because he's by himself and he's pretty slow, so you can just keep your distance and keep timing those power hits and that'll take him out. Overall, I'd say this is the most interesting game of the three I've reviewed, and uh, while it is on a 16-bit platform as compared to the others on an 8-bit, I don't think that's really the reason. It's uh, also not really the storyline either. I think it's just the controls seem easier to work and the strategy is a bit more clear. Alright, so that about wraps it up for the review on these games. I have a couple other things I want to say. Um, for example, these games are not really of a genre that I've ever really cared for, particularly fighting games. I'm, I'm, I mean, let's be honest, I, sh I gotta confess, I've never cared for Mortal Kombat, Punch-Out, or Double Dragon, or any of those kind of games where you're walking around punching people, and you know, I don't know why, I've just, I just don't care for them. So again, I probably wasn't the best person to do a review on these, I tried to remain objective. Uh, so even though, you know, I probably didn't find them that fun, I know those types of games are um, very popular. So I'm sure that there's a uh, probably a lot of you guys out there that will like playing these and uh, you know I, I can't stress enough how important it is that uh, development for these vintage platforms continues to happen and one of the things that we need to do as consumers to make sure that happens is we need to buy these games you know when they come out. Um, speaking of that you know, I do have my own game. I know I've mentioned it a few times. I've been working on this for a year, and um, it's actually just about done. Uh, these are two pre-release copies. Uh, one of these I'm going to be sending to uh, Metal Jesus Rocks, and the other one I'm sending to Modern Vintage Gamer. Uh, both of these guys have offered to review the product on their own YouTube channels. Now, I'm going to be doing my own video on this game uh, probably in a few weeks, but uh, I thought uh, that it would probably be good to have a, a couple of non-biased reviews I could point to as well since, uh, you know, hey, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm pretty close to the project. I can't give you an um, objective review of the game, so uh, hopefully they can. Anyway, if you have a game that you have designed that's either finished or almost finished uh, for a vintage platform and you want it to be reviewed, then by all means send it to me. Um, I want to start doing uh, these reviews at least quarterly, you know, maybe a few times a year. I want to uh, do a little mini episode where I review these games, so send them on over. And uh, I guess that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching.